Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, wearing my brand new Snoopy t-shirts, Christmas gift, what else, because I have a lot of cool t-shirts I wear, oh, hey, that's what makes it fun, and this one says, working for the weekend with Snoopy laying on the back of his uh, doghouse, and just like the song by Loverboy, everybody's working for the weekend, <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, I decided to do a movie review this week, and I saw this a couple weeks ago. And since I'm a fan of Transformers, also, even though I am a Peanuts fan, but I'm, I also love a lot of '80s and '90s nostalgia and and cartoons and stuff, and shows too. So whatever. I decided to review Bumblebee. Yep, this is basically a new Transformers movie. But it's more of a prequel and spin-off to all the Transformers films that we had in recent years, you know, since 2007. All which are directed by Michael Bay. But the first few films having Shia LaBeouf as Sam Witchwicky. And, and of course the last two films with uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. But we also had Transformers the Movie from 1986, which is based on Transformers Generation 1. And we also follow with all the other generations that, that came to be, you know, because Transformers is such a popular franchise ever since the 80s. We had a lot of action figures, all from Hasbro, and it spawned worldwide, everywhere. So, just like Peanuts. Now, Transformers was also an icon. But my favorite has always been Optimus Prime, the leader of the Autobots, and Bumblebee. So it's really cool that now we get to see a movie about Bumblebee. And I was looking forward to it because after the last Transformers movie, he had The Last Night with Mark Wahlberg and Anthony Hopkins, and I consider it to be the worst Transformers movie ever, without a doubt. I figured this one would be a big surprise. And seeing that this movie is being set in 1987, because this was the time when Transformers was very popular, because I remember watching Transformers as a kid, a baby. <laughs> uh, it was on KCOP Channel 13 in the mornings. So it's always fun to watch uh, the Autobots... Um, Battling the Decepticons and in Cybertron City or any other, and they and they go around transforming through cars and trucks or any other. So it's really cool. Yeah, I love that. And all, and you already know that I went to Universal Studios Hollywood. Yeah, I posted a clip of that where I went to Transformers: The Ride. Yeah, it was awesome. And it was really cool because I get to meet both Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. It's just fun. And I get a picture taken with, with them. So, can't help it. Now, of course, I, I do love um, Transformers the movie from 1986. You know, I, I still get uh, chills these days because even though I love the soundtrack, I, I love the animation and the whole story itself but at the same time yeah <laughs> this was a pretty ballsy one that it kind of made me burst into tears especially you know the death scenes of some of my favorites at this rate Optimus Prime boy that that got me as a kid when, when we rented this on VHS yeah but it's good that I got it on DVD now but no, I don't have the Blu-ray, Sally. Um, and I did enjoy the first three uh, Transformers movies that Michael Bay directed, with Shia LaBeouf being the star. And yeah, I know, you know, people criticize it, you know, and and then it, it did have awkward moments in, in the sequels, such as Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon come to mind. It has a little bit of that in in the first one. 
And of course, as usual, because Michael Bay loves to do this all the time, he always loves to cast hot chicks and big explosions. <laughs> And then all the fans always love to criticize all the time. Yeah, what else is new? And people get tired of it too, but yet these movies are so popular that they made tons of money at the box office. But the last one was a flop, um, which is the worst one in my opinion. Definitely the worst one actually, period. And I know everybody else hated it too. And that's, of course, The Last Night with Mark Wahlberg and... Anthony Hopkins. There you go. But Bumblebee definitely is way better than that. And there's no doubt about it. Because this is directed by the same man who gave us Cuba and the Two Strings. A good movie by Leica Entertainment. So this is his first uh, movie that he gets to direct in live action form. And this is the right choice. So. Plus it had a heart to it. I mean, it was very heartwarming, so they really went for for something different. And, but it does have all the action, um, even if it's only focusing on just one character and a young girl who's 18. So you got um, Hailey Steinfeld playing the role. You have the same actress who was in the film True Grid, the remake, by the Corn Brothers. And of course you got John Cena from WWE to join in. And I know people are not fans of John Cena, but that's fine. I just say he's okay, you know, he's he's alright. But hey, at least he wasn't bad in this one, so I'll give you that. But you also got a lot of great cast to join in, so some new actors or some familiar ones or, or but anyway, let's let's get to the start. Um, this movie stars Haley Steinfeld, uh, John Cena, uh, George Lensberg uh, Jr., uh, John Otis, uh, Jason Drucker, Pan uh, Pamela Segal Adlon. Yes, for those who don't know, you know she's a voice actress. Did the voice of Bobby Hill in King of the Hill, and does uh, several others. She, she also did the voice of Dean in the TV show Rugrats. Uh, she was even in the movie uh, Grease 2 and, and Gate 2 Trespassers. Yeah, that, that's her. And she looked quite different now um, over the years. Yeah. Steven Schneider, Gwen Turdman, Grace Lee Dezini, Fred Dreyer. Yes, Fred Dreyer small role. Um, he's been best known for playing the Hunter in the TV show Hunter. And he was also in the movie uh, Death Before Dishonor. So it was nice to see him. Uh, Lenny Jacobson and Megan Price. Also in the movie were Transformers themselves. We got Peter Cullen, uh, Dylan O'Brien, yeah, Angela Bassett, Yes, Angela Bassett from What's Love Got to Do With It and Black Panther, among others. Justin Furrox, uh, David Sabolo, Kirk Bailey. Yes, Kirk Bailey. Been best known for the, for playing the Kevin Ugly in the TV show Salute Your Shorts from Nick Wardian. Uh, he, he went on to do other stuff too, uh, mostly voice acting or something. And um, Steve Blum, yes, Stephen J. Blum, has always been known for doing the voice of Spike Spigel in the TV show uh, Cowboy Bebop, the Japanese anime. And Greg Griffin. It's written by Christina Hobson, who's been known for writing the, the movie Shut In. And it's directed by Travis Knight. Again, he directed the movie Cuba and the Two Strings. The movie began set in a futuristic city known as Cybertron. The Autobots, led by Optimus Prime, voiced by Peter Cullen, of course, 
They're about to lose the war between the Decepticons, that's led by Soundwave, Shockwave, and Starscream, and are prepared to evacuate the planet. So Optimus sends an Autobot scout by the name of B-127. Yeah, this was before he was named Bumblebee. And he actually has a voice, so he actually speaks like a young teenager or so. So he sends them to Earth on an escape pod so he can set up a base operations where the Autobots can contact and regroup together. But the Decepticons um, suddenly, uh, along with Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp, had destroyed the launch pad during the escape. And that's where we, we start in the year 1987, and B-127 had reaches Earth alone and crash lands in California where this is where they had a training exercise for by Sector 7 that's led by Colonel Jack Burns that's played by uh, John Cena <laughs> which yes they were actually uh, shooting with paintball guns <laughs> they actually captured uh, one soldier and, and <laughs> he just keeps on shooting him uh, but then uh, B-127 came and then he began to notice that yes all the other Decepticons is about to land and this is where we had a battle B-127 um, had a battle straight into the forest all the way into land and where Biswain suddenly ambushes him B-127 refused to uh, reveal Optimus Prime's um, location area that that all the Autobots are in and because of that he tears his voice box and damages his memory cord but then he kills Biss Wing before collapsing from his injuries he winds up transforming into a 1967 Bose Rack and Beetle so, just to become as classy and try to hide from where all the others are. But meanwhile, we meet a teenager who just turned 18 years old, well, the following day, named Charlie Watson, who's played by Hailey Steinfeld, who felt very traumatized after the death of her father, and her mother, Sally, played by Pamela uh, Segal Adlon, had suddenly got remarried married to uh, Ron, who's played by Stefan Schneider. They only gave her uh, two presents. Yeah, one is a book on how to smile, and or or something uh, pretty small. Charlie also works at a hot dog on a stick stand at a local carnival, where she spots a, a guy that she was about to serve him but accidentally uh, spilled on his shirt and he had to take it off right in front of uh, his friends and they started making fun of her so, yeah, a bunch of jerks then Charlie who works as a young mechanic for Uncle Hank went to a scrap yard and actually spotted uh, a yellow beetle that's filled with honeycombs of bees that's inside that's underneath the uh, the engine of, of the car and since she wanted a car for her birthday she figures why not so she paid for it and she decided to get a fix so everything will be as good as new that is until when she takes her car into um, the garage she begins to spot uh, the face of B-127 which, you know, as we all know, he was exactly all alone and, you know, doesn't have a voice since it's been damaged and, and is memorable, not to mention his memory cord. So now that's when Charlie suddenly names him Bumblebee. So for a couple of days, she's been fixing him as he begins to communicate by... <laughs> listening to music on, on those cassettes such as the Smiths for instance 
because she's also a big fan of the Smiths. Yeah, she loves to listen to that. Yeah, I love the Smiths too. Yeah, Morrissey. And she even lets him watch, uh, get this, the movie uh, The Breakfast Club. And this is where he does that pose <laughs> yeah, for the end of the movie. <laughs> I, I love that moment. And um, so she's just trying her best to actually uh, fix him and be able to be as good as new and be able to, to communicate him to make him become very special. So those are great moments. Um, also Bumblebee watches a, an old video where she was a diver um, at high school uh, with her father. And he didn't want to see that because that was just one of those memories that he had with, with his father, uh, with her father, since we all know he passed away. So then we meet, um, but then we meet, uh, so Bumblebee suddenly treats like, like uh, he's a puppy dog. Even though Charlie does have a dog, and even has a brother who's obnoxious named Otis, who does enter the karate championship. He's always dressed up for karate, does all this other stuff. Um, so, so, at this rate, Charlie was trying her best to actually restore all the, all the memories of Bumblebee and hoping things will be okay for him but then meanwhile we have two Decepticons who's about to go after him and that is Shattered and Dropkick both voiced by Angela Bassett and Justin Ferox which they both uh, are triple changers because they transform into a Plymouth GTX and a Harrier Jump Jet and the other one just transforms into a blue AMC Javelin and a Bell AH-1 Super Cobra. So this is really cool that you actually got a Decepticon that can transform into two. <laughs> but then we also learn about that later. <laughs> um, so they're about to go after him. But first um, they had to go after uh, Jack Burns and the rest of the team to actually uh, try to transfer the location on where Bumblebee is at and also try to contact with the Autobots so that way you know they can have a battle but for most of the time Charlie is also with a friend he's actually a neighbor next door named Memo who's played by George Linda Borg Jr. The guy and his friends, you know, actually forced her to actually uh, to do uh, high jumping, you know, cliff jumping. She refuses. Yeah. So then, Memo and, and Charlie decide to get revenge on one of uh, the the guy's friends, yeah, because she was a bitch, <laughs> by actually throwing eggs and and toilet paper around her house, even smashing her car. <laughs> yeah, before it, it became a high-speed chase, and that's where you spot uh, the officer. It's played by Fred Dreyer, and <laughs> so that's the trouble here. <laughs> so then, um, the Decepticons was using the radio tower at a nearby harbor to actually contact, so that way they'll they'll have a battle with them in San Francisco. Jack later captured Bumblebee from Charlie and Memo and was ready to put him inside the facility where Jack's scientist and colleague was trying to find out you know, with the help of the two Decepticons. Bumblebee along with Charlie and Memo escape just when Jack was about to go after them and they went all the way just to battle between the two which led to the, the conclusion. I was very impressed with this movie. It has amazing action scenes throughout. Some heartwarming scenes and 
funny moments here and there. Um, this is definitely the perfect Transformers movie to have. I mean, considering that Michael Bay uh, didn't direct this and he produced it uh, with Steven Spielberg and and the rest of the producers, uh, Alonzo D. Bonaventura, uh, Tom DeSanto, Don Murphy, and and Mark uh, Barbadian. So, but a anyway, I mean. I thought the cast was great, including Hailey Steinfeld. So she's very good, very talented. And she really uh, portrayed the role very well. You definitely feel bad for her that she lost her father. I mean, at times she you know she couldn't get along with the family very well. I mean, so there's a bit of drama. So there was a bit of dramatic moments here. Uh. Uh, her with uh, Membo, um, who's the next door neighbor and sort of become friends. Um, it was cool. And of course, uh, Bumblebee. And the rest of the Autobots and Decepticons joining in. I mean, it, it was a pure delight. Uh, even John Cena wasn't bad in the movie. I mean, surprisingly. I mean, he plays exactly like a, what a soldier would play. Um, or any other kernels, so, I, so it's not too bad. Um, so, it, and it definitely has um, the perfect 80s nostalgia right there, even though there, I do have a nitpick on one thing, was that uh, there was a scene, which is a funny moment, where Bumblebee was about to get out of the garage and go inside the house <laughs> and try to crash into the door, you know, where the dog is. And started uh, trying out uh, the uh, all these other technology they have here. He even took out a can of tab, which is a little bit of a nitpick because that tab can is is actually today's tab can. If you notice the the symbol that said zero calories per can, because that's a symbol you see uh, for today's. Uh, today's uh, refreshment for today's soft drinks <laughs> and they never put this label in the 80s and they used to come in different kind of cans too as I recall but the rest just definitely seemed like 80s already with you know with all the the TVs the VCRs all this other technology and all the the clothes and it definitely had a lot of 80s music joining in because after all this is set in the era. Um, they even put in the song You Got the Touch by Stan Bush. Yes, because that's the song that was heard in Transformers the movie from 1986. So this was a huge nod to that. I'm glad they put that in there in that one scene. <laughs> even radios too and cassettes. It's all there. Of course, it's too bad we didn't get to see more of Optimus Prime and, and the rest of the Autobots, but that's just the whole set of the story, that you only get to see them at the beginning. This might as well just be the best installment that we ever got. I mean, considering that this is a prequel and a, a spin-off. And this is exactly what we're going to go for for the, for the next generation, but I guess Either way, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that we finally got a Transformers movie it really deserves. So, hey. So, I'm just happy that at least we got something good for a change and not something terrible. So, but hey, that's my opinion. <laughs> so anyway, that's Bumblebee, and I give the movie, what else? Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.